Hey, all my life I've been limitless, nigga never had a limit. Huh. Yeah, rolling around in the road, you still in the city. Okay, this is my fifth time recording this tutorial, so yeah, let's just get it over with. So, data moshing in Sony Vegas. It's not real data moshing. It won't look exactly like actual data moshing that you get when you have to download that one program. Um, it's more like we're going to fake it, if that makes sense. We're going to make something that kind of looks like data moshing. But it, I thought it was a cool transition, uh, transition not to show you guys, so here I am showing you guys. So, this is going to be a pretty intense tutorial there's gonna be a lot of layers to it so feel free to pause anytime and you know look back and yeah that's basically that's basically it so a couple of things you need to know every every data mosh is gonna look different it's all dependent on your clip even if uh, like let's say even if it's real data mosh it all depends on your clip and it, it's all subjective to see to see if you like it or not so I don't really know if how this data mosh is gonna turn out but I think it's gonna turn out uh, pretty decently. So here's my clips that I chose, All right? And then another thing to notice that if you have, if the second clip you're gonna move to is has a camera panning, you're gonna want, you're gonna want to motion track it because it just gives a better effect. But there's no worries because the motion track is we're gonna do it by hand and it's gonna not it's not gonna be that intense. All right, so let's get into let's get onto the tutorial. So. What you want to what you're, what you're gonna want to do is you want to create about five five tracks. So that'll be two, three, five. All right. I'm gonna drag these two clips up all the way to the top, and then yeah, let me control Z, and then we can start. So what we want to do now is we want to click on the first layer or the first track, go one frame to the left, split the clip, and then we want to right click this split clip and create sub clip. Now you want to do is you want to drag the sub clip all the way down to the bottom. And then you want to just drag this out uh, a little bit. Now however long this sub clip is, is however long the your transition is going to be. So if I have a sub clip this tiny, like two frames, that's how fast your transition is going to be. I'm going to make it about here. So it's going to start here and then end. I'm going to make it a little bit longer here and then end. Um, so yeah, that's how long your transition is going to be. All right, second thing we want to do, we want to get the sub clip, we want to hold down control and copy it to the layer above it. And now I'll I'll show you why. So let's just start. We'll just get our all our layers together first, and then we'll start putting the effects on. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to cut this a little bit to the end right here, and I want to make a. There we go. I want to make my. Uh, I want to get this clip as long as my sub clip is. So here we go, and I'm just going to drag this down to the top of it, top of the sub clip, so everything's aligned and we have a clean slate. All right, so now we have this clip, and then here starts our sub clip and the second clip, which is as long as the sub clips. All right. Now the next thing you want to do is you want to copy the second clip. And bring that on top of there. Now we want to just cut it down about halfway and then fade it in a little bit and that'll just give it more of an effect. Obviously obviously it's subjective and you can play with it, play with these settings, but I just found this to be the best. Okay, so now we can start putting on the effects. Actually wait, we can't yet because we have to motion track it. So what we want to do now is we want to just go to the top layer, right click and insert a video track. Go to your media generators, uh, you want to go to you want to go to solid or dang all right you want to go to solid color, and then just drag on the solid color. I'm gonna choose red because it's easy to see. And then you just want to make it as long as your sub clips. Delete that. Okay, and now you want to go to the pan crop of the solid red color. Click on the about the first setting. You want to make sure this is checked. Click on the first marker right, mask. And then you're going to want to just create a mask of a tiny circle and whatever you want. And then I'm just going to drag this mask over. Hold on. Let me 
select all. Okay, and I'm just going to drag this mask over to his mouth where or a point where you can track so it can be someone's eyes. It can be like a light post that like never moves. It's just a, you need a point to track. All right, so now we're going to go to the end of it and his mouth is right here, so I'm going to Okay, sorry. Go go to pan and crop the position tab and then we're going to want to go to the end of it and then we're going to want to move the pan and crop to a little bit where the to the red dot is on his mouth. And I'm just going to click on the middle to check if my pan and crop is correct. It's a little bit off, so I'm going to move this about there. So if we look at our motion track, the red circle is on his mouth the whole time. Okay, and that's what we need. Okay, so now what we need to do, we want to click on our first keyframe to our last keyframe on their pan and crop. Copy that. We want to scroll all the way down to our first subclip. Sorry about that. First subclip. Click on the pan and crop on the first subclip and paste your keyframes. So now we have our keyframes. So if I move the, or if I move, if I mute these top layers, this is what our first, this is what we'll see. We'll have our animation and pretty much our motion tracking. Um, you can also motion track the bottom clip, but I don't like to do that because uh, I just I just don't like to do that. I think we, we don't need to, but you can as well. So now now we're done with our motion track, so we, we can delete the top layer with the red solid. So now we need to put on our effects. Keep these two layers muted because we don't need them right now. So now what we want to do is we want to go to the top sub clip layer, go to the left, click on this green button, click on custom. And now we need to click on this Vegas displacement map. Click add and click OK. OK, now we need to go over here, click animate. Uh, bring these all the way down. Make sure this is checked and make sure you're at the beginning of the clip. Make these to zero. Go to your end of the clip. And then you're going to want to bring this a little bit up, just a tiny bit. You don't want to go too overdone with it, like very minimal at most. Um, I'm going to bring this down a little bit. I had a really good one last time, but now it's not going to be as good. All right, so this is going to be my warp. So if you look at it now, we have this nice animation. Okay. So now since we have this nice animation, we can start on the other effects. Now we're going to want to unmute this long second clip. And then we're going to start putting the effects on. Go to your video effects, and then you're going to want to look up Chroma Keyer. So uh, just go to Chroma Keyer, drag the default on. And with this long sub clip underneath the top one, uh, you just want to, here, let me change this real quick. OK, so with this long sub clip, you're going to want to click on this blue click on this pointer tool and then you're going to want to pick something that's a dominant color in your second clip so I see all this yellowish tone and there's a lot of yellow in the second clip so I'm going to choose that so if you have like a lot of purple in your clip if it's like you know someone's hair and they have like just bright purple you could use that too but I'm going to click on his outer jacket right here and then uh, as the yellow okay and then Sorry about that. And then we're going to, so the next thing you want to do now is you want to go to the beginning of this first clip and then you want to keyframe the high threshold and the low threshold. You want to bring the low threshold all the way up and then you want to go to the end and then bring the low threshold all the way down. We're going to wait on animating the high threshold after we see what this top layer effects looks like. But for right now, this is what our transition is looking like. It's almost on the way there. It can it can use some re reworking. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to unmute this top clip. I'm going to drag it out a little bit. And we kind of want to do the same thing. We're going to drag Chroma Keyer onto the top clip. And since this is a kind of a dark video, we're going to just going to Chroma Key out black. If you have a really bright video, 
uh, you can, dang, everything's all messed up today. If you have a really bright video, you can, might be able to get away with chroma keying out white. Let's say like you have the sky and it's just pure white, you might be able to get away with that. But since it's just always just black, you're, you're, you're usually going to use black bow most of the time. So it's going to be the same thing. We're going to keyframe a low and high threshold. Go to the be beginning and bring up the low threshold. We're going to go to the end. And then we're just going to bring the low threshold all the way down. Okay. We can even bring the high threshold a little bit down as well. So now if you look at our transition, we're getting somewhat a resemblance of a data mosh effect, which it can be better, but I think it's where I chose my clips at. So if you look at it closely, we have this, and then he starts coming up. Maybe I can bring this out a little bit first. He has this and he starts coming up and we have that. What we can do play around with is there's not a lot of pixelation. So what I can do is I'm going to type in pixelate and I'm just going to get the large pixelate or whatever you want. And I'm going to put this on the second clip. And then what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to make this a little bit bigger like that and then okay and then what I want to do is keyframe this and that and then I'm just gonna make that right there make another keyframe about in the middle and then at the end I'm just gonna bring this down so if you look at it It'll look even, it's it's getting there. It's getting close to uh, data moshing. There's the thing that I'm having trouble with is this little section right here where it comes out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna motion track the bottom clip, which we don't really need to do. We can just copy, I can technically just press right click on this top clip and copy, go down and paste event attributes. So now if you look at our transition, it's resembling data moshing a little tiny bit. You can see it and it's blurred. And let me fix this up a little bit. If I click on this, okay. If I invert that, invert that, we'll see what this looks like. Okay, maybe not invert it. Oh wait, it's because I made a keyframe. Hold on, let me do that. Alpha channel. Alpha. Okay. And then it's not giving us this, this, the distortion we want. So take this off. And so I'm gonna go to the end of the clip and then I'm gonna bring this distortion up a little bit more. Okay. And that is kind of here. I'm put pixelation on this top clip then. Even more of it like that. Keyframe it, like I said, and then just goes to the end. And then now we have this effect, which is kind of close to data washing and it's it's all like i said it's all subjective and it's all depends on your clip i've uh, i've done this effect before and i've had better it just all depends on your clips and how, how you use it um and yeah uh, just another couple tips i know some people they like to get this top layer and they like to click like lighten or darken see how it it changed uh, you guys might like that if I click darken, which I might not look good. Yeah, that's exactly what I thought it was going to happen. If I parent this, and then if I darken this, it'll look something kind of like that, which we don't kind of want. If I lighten, and see that look, that even right there looks more like data moshing. Yeah, like I said, it's all messing with the effects. Wow, I really like that. Okay, like, like I said, it's all messing with the effects and how you want it. Um, let's say if, if I fade this out, 
and look at it. That looks more sort of data moshing to me. All right, yeah, and they also put difference on. You'll get this, um, you'll get this hue right here, and a lot of people do that. Another way to do that is just look up color curves and bring on this infrared down to the top clip, and it should do the same thing, which is kind of it gives more of a glitch effect. I don't know if you guys like that or not, but yeah, that's basically it for this tutorial. If you liked, leave a like. If you dislike, uh, leave a dislike. Comment on what you want to see next, or comment if you want to tell me anything. And subscribe, like always. Uh, yeah, check out my Sofi, so you get all my presets. Yeah, peace out later.